Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. Hallelujah. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the worship. And that's the reason why we are here. You know, God can do everything for himself, but there's one thing that he can't do, and that is to worship himself. Praise the Lord, which is the reason why you and I are here this morning. We want to go before God. If we can all rise, let's go before God and just thank God for today and bless God for today. And um, just say to yourselves before we go before God that if, 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 if there's anything in us, if there's any iniquity in us, if there's any resentment in us, let's just go before God and say, God, forgive us. Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name, O oh God. Spirit of the living God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration, O oh God. Spirit of the living God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we exalt your name, O oh God. Father, we bless your name this morning, O oh God. Father, we come before your throne of grace. If there's anything in us, O oh God, that you, that you need to prune us. Prune us, O oh God, this morning, O oh God. If there's anything in us, O oh God, that needs cleansing, Father, cleanse us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, sanctify us this morning, O oh God. Is there any resentment in us, O oh God? Is there any unforgiveness in us, O oh God? Is there anything that doesn't fit your throne? Father, this morning we are saying, Lord Almighty, O oh God, Oh, Father, prune us, O oh God. Oh, Father, cleanse us, sanctify us. We understand, O oh God, that you are a holy God. And for that, Father, we need to be holy. We need to be righteous to stand before your throne of grace, O oh God. Before we come and pray, Father, we are saying, Lord God Almighty, yes, Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us, O oh God, for whatever that we might have done, knowingly or unknowingly. Father, we are praying that you forgive us. Spirit of the living God, have your way, O oh God. We, cl we bless your name, O oh God. You are good and your messenger is forever. Thank you, Jesus, O oh God, have your way. Thank you, Father. We bless your name, O oh God. We believe you are a God that forgives. We believe you are a God, O oh God, that, that, that your mercies are new every morning, O oh God. You say, O oh God, if, you're, if, you, if your sins are as red as blood, O oh God, you can wash them as white as snow. Father, we give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to talk about something here. Um, you know, um, or um, I've got this glass of water here, which is full. Hallelujah. This glass of water here, you can interpret it whichever way you want to interpret it. You can say, Father, fill me. Hallelujah. You can say, I want, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be filled with the desire to worship God. Hallelujah. I want to experience the fullness of God. Hallelujah. And when you experience the fullness of God, the devil has no room. When you experience the fullness of God, the devil has no chance in your life. Hallelujah. That's the prayer point we're going to take this morning. That Father, fill me. Fill me with every goodness. Fill me with everything that, that pleases you. Praise the Lord. Fill my cup and make me whole. Because when you make me whole, there is no room for anything else. Praise the Lord. Remember this, this glass. Full glass. When you're full with the things of God, there's no room for the enemy. Praise the Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up. Fill my cup, Lord. 
I'll leave it up Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I work no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Father, we give you all the praise, O oh God. Father, we thirst for you this morning, O oh God. Father, this morning we thirst for you, Jesus. We thirst for you, mighty Lord. We thirst for you, O oh God. Oh, living water. We thirst for you, O oh God. Living water, we thirst for you, O oh God. Jacob's well can never do, O oh God. But it's your well, O oh God. That you say when you drink from this well, O oh God. Oh, you never thirst again. Fill us this morning. Fill us, O oh God. Fill us, O oh God. We thirst for you, Jesus. We are passionate, oh God. We desire, oh God, to be filled, oh God. Fill our cup, oh God. You say when you drink of this water, you will never thirsty again. When you drink of this water, you will never run dry. Father, in the name of Jesus, what is it, oh God, that's preventing us from being filled, oh God? We are laying it before your throne this morning. And we're saying, fill us, oh God. Fill our cup, oh God. Fill us and make us whole. Fill us and make us whole, oh God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh Holy Spirit, fill us this morning. Fill us this morning. We are ready to be filled, oh God. We desire to be filled, oh God. We are thirsty, oh God. We are thirsty. We are thirsty. Christian God, our chapel is thirsty. Christian God, our chapel is thirsty. We are thirsty for you, Jesus. We are thirsty for you, Jesus. We humble ourselves this morning and we are saying Father whatever that is in us oh God, that's preventing us from being filled oh God, we need you Jesus this morning, fill us this morning oh God, Spirit of the living God fill us oh God, we are ready we are ready we are ready, we are ready oh God, fill us oh God for nations, fill us oh God for nations oh God, go ye and preach the gospel, that's the greatest commandment oh God, that's the great commission and for We stand for India. We stand for God for the nations. People are 
to God. He says, I call unto the Lord and he answered me. I call unto the Lord and he heard my prayer. Father, we know, Father, this morning, oh God, as we have called unto you, mighty Lord, you hear our prayer. Spirit of the living God, we give you praise. Take control, Lord. Have your way, oh God. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Who is like you, oh God? You are full of compassion. You are full of mercy, oh God. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Oh, Father, even as India is knowing that there's only one God, even as they are knowing, oh Father, they are demolishing all those gods. Father, let it be, Father. Let your name be known. Every knee who confess, every tongue who confess that she
I will testify. Hallelujah. Spend with 
Fill us up, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Greetings, everyone. I'd like to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus and welcome you all to Christian Gold House Ministry. We promote love across all nations. We welcome everyone, no matter who you are, that walks through our doors. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I would like to extend at this moment, or acknowledge, a very special person in the house, the great man of God, our own father, prophet, Reverend Samuel Sarpong. So if you could just give him a clap of friend. Thank you. Good morning. And... There's a special announcement because it is this special man's birthday, and not only his birthday, we're celebrating, I'm the wife, or who does it know, we're celebrating the birthday and of this king and our anniversary, four years in God, thank you for your... Thank you. We bless God and thank you for his mercies. And so today we have a little celebration because we want to involve you all and share the love. And thank you for your support that you have extended to us all. And keep praying us on. We have just started. We have a long way to go. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. And he says he's living to 175, so he has a hundred and something more to go. So pray him on and strengthen him on as he reaches his goal of 175. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just want to welcome everyone to today's ministry service. If it's your first time, just stand while we welcome you. Welcome our brother. Good morning. God bless you. Hope it's not your last time. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. So today, as we say, we're celebrating. So everyone, please stay back. We have some lovely food coming. My sister is cooking some nice Jamaican food, as you know. I'm from Jamaica, and she's coming with that later. And we also have sandwiches and hors d'oeuvres from Costco and a beautiful cake. So celebrate with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They that shall, sorry, they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able to, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given unto you. That's Deuteronomy 16, verse 16 and 17. So at this time, the ushers will take the offerings. Those on Facebook, if you would like to bless the ministry, the offering details will be on the screen or you could go to the church account and the church website on the church website which is cghministry.com slash donate cghministry.com slash donate god bless you hallelujah so we'll have the ushers collecting the offering at this time thank you Shaking together, running over. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, 
We will ask Minister Olivia to bless the offering for us. Jesus. I don't know if the children are ready. I was told that we have a small presentation by the children. While we wait for them, if anyone wants to come and say a special word to Pastor for his birthday and our anniversary, you're welcome to do so while we wait for the children. Anyone? I would like to think somebody would like to wish Pastor happy birthday and also happy anniversary to us. Sister Taya, I see you're itching. I know you're just itching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think I was itching. <laughs> what can we say? But thank you, Lord. Amen. Pastor, did you know that he would honor you this Hallelujah. way? Hallelujah. Mommy, did you know he would no, honor you this I way? I didn't, actually. I just want to thank God for the life of my pastor. Amen. I can never stop Amen. saying it, Amen. but my life changed from the Hallelujah. moment I entered this place. Amen. And it's, it keeps on changing. Amen. And there's mightier testimonies coming. Amen. So I just thank God for my pastor who was, who's been on my journey Amen. from day one. And he's just, uh, just held my hand, opened doors for me, and the doors keep opening. And I just thank God. I remember there was a time that we were praying for Mrs. Sapong. Now she's here. Hallelujah. And can we see a difference now? Oh, We've even got Amen. a food bank. Amen. We've got a new building. Look how beautiful it is. Amen. It's great. We just thank Grace God for God. you are our answered prayer. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. God bless Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Amen. birthday. Thank you. Anyone else? like to say a special message to your pastor? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And enjoy with our pastor. Amen. So pastor, I will sing a special song for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. And I will sing to you, Lord, a hymn of love for your faithfulness to me. And I'm carried in everlasting arms. You never let me go. thank God because through all the years that we've known pastor he hasn't changed Amen. and as sister Taya said our answer prayer is here Amen. and it has really really made a very vast difference Amen. I can see my pastor always smiling Amen. always at peace and that is what we want because Amen. at the end of the day when he's at peace we will be at peace Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We bless God for your lives. I know you all are itching to say something, but I'll give you the opportunity after because the children are ready now. So we would like to welcome our Sunday school. Give them a clap offering. Welcome the children.
You ready? They're not ready. Are they not ready? Okay. We'll give them a clap, cheer them on as they come. Encourage them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. So let's go have a presentation for you. First, we have some ministrations by Wendy and Kamara.
And now we have Bible verse from Jeff and Ryan. And read. First John, First John chapter 7, verse 8. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God. And everyone who is born from God and knows God, the person who does not love God does not know God because God is love. First Corinthians 1, verse 4. I thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 3 verse 15. I will give you a shepherd after my own heart. Who will feed you with knowledge and understand? And our pastor is. Our shepherd is called Pastor oh. Samuel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time. Let's give him a round of applause. You've done well, haven't you? Yes. yes. Uh, once again, Pastor, we just want to say it's an honor to Amen. serve under you. God bless. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. The Sunday school, we think you're the best pastor. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord increase you, sir. Amen. May it be well with you. Amen. With you and your family. Amen. Also for mommy. Amen. Thank you for looking after our pastor. God bless. You wouldn't be what he is without you. Amen. So we appreciate you so much. Amen. And uh, we are trusting that by next year. Amen. We'll give you maybe Mercedes Benz for the present. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are some that have no clip. May the Lord help you with it. Amen. Amen. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for the Sunday School. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. God bless you. Give them a big round of applause. We bless God for our children. They are the future. Hallelujah. We glorify God as we cheer them on and keep them in prayers. Keep them walking in the right way. Hallelujah. We just keep praying them on. They're doing so well. They're going from strength to strength, greater to greater. We pray for the covering of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, so wonderful. Wonderful. At this time, Auntie Olivia, sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, there's another presentation. Oh. We're being overpowered, showered in love today. <laughs> Unexpected blessings. <laughs> I just want to thank God for this day. I just want to thank God for this day, for adding one more year to our pastor's life. Amen. And I just want to say that God is so wonderful. Amen. And I want to sing this song before I do my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah. is a wonderful pastor that I've ever come across. Amen. This morning as I was having my shower, I've been on WhatsApp several times to watch anointed, the so-called anointed men of God. And I see what they are doing at the end times. And what I say is that God, I thank you for directing me to a 
Bible teaching church. Amen. It is not every church that is a church. Mm. But you have to ask God that God lead me to a spirit filled, Holy Spirit filled church. Amen. And that makes the difference. Amen. And I thank God that he has directed my feet to this place. Amen. And ever since I came to this place, my life has never been the same. Amen. I give God a praise for this wonderful pastor. Amen. And I always pray for him that God should give him more anointing to do his work. It is not easy. Sometimes when I look at pastor, I said, God lift him up. Amen. It is only you and you, you alone. Amen. Because the task that he has given to him, Amen. without you and I, he can't do it. Amen. Without you and I, he cannot accomplish it. Amen. And God will also ask him why he didn't accomplish that work. Amen. And who will take the greater punishment. Amen. So I will urge all of you that when you are praying, Pray for him. Remember him in your prayers. Amen. That more anointing and more Amen. grace will be upon his life. Amen. That God will lead him and direct his path wherever that he goes. Amen. The presence of God will go before him by the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of God by day. Amen. Pastor, this afternoon I bless you and I honor you. Amen. With all the heavenly and the heavenly blessings, receive it. Amen. You are more than anointed. Amen. You overcome your enemy. Amen. Like how Elijah overcame Ahab. Yours is like that. Amen. You will mount like eagles Amen. and you will run. Amen. You will take nations Amen. by the power of God. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. This year by this time, Amen. you will see your daughters. You will see your Amen. children around Amen. you. Amen. Your birthday will be a birthday of a difference. Amen. You are blessed beyond case. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. On behalf of the Women's Fellowship, mm. the pillar of the house, mm. I present this to our honorable pastor. Amen. For his Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you more, Auntie Olivia, and increase you more. As you have blessed the man of God, he will bless you a hundredfold. And God will bless all of you, because I know all of you love him the same and more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So at this time, to not make it too long today, we are going to introduce the speaker of the day to bless us. So be attentive and open your hearts to receive the word from God. I would like to welcome at this time the speaker, Brother Matonga. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much, Mrs. Also for Mommy. <laughs> I don't know whether that's how you, you yeah. said it. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't stand up to come and uh, say a few words. It was uh, asked to, uh, for, for our pastor because I know that uh, I had an opportunity. And uh, this is the time that I, I may say something. Uh, I just want to say... Happy birthday, Pastor. Thank you. And uh, we are all very happy to see you uh, increase your years Amen. in grace. Amen. Yeah, and uh, it's an honor that uh, we are all sitting under your, under your leadership. Uh, we appreciate you in every area for giving us uh, the opportunity, for making us uh, the platform for us to grow in the spiritual uh things so for that we say what we say church god bless you god bless you god bless you pastor god bless you god bless you uh, and uh i can't i can't continue preaching uh man i say thank you very much uh for the opportunity that you've given unto each one of us uh to be able to stand in front and uh, and uh, and, uh, and give the word or, or minister or teach as we are still continuing with the series of Bible study, looking into the into the Bible, so we really thank you for the uh, for the opportunity and the platform that you've created for for us to be able uh, to minister. Amen. Amen. And uh, before I continue, I've just uh, I've just seen a few uh, a few faces 
I think because of lockdown, we we uh, we have not had uh, an opportunity to see each other. But uh, yes. I would like to welcome uh, uh, Sister Ivy. Uh, Sister Ivy. Uh, we we still uh, we were praying for you. Yes. We're looking forward to seeing you just as you've come yes. at the right time. Yes. Yes. We bless you and your family. You wonderful. And uh, our hearts just skipped. My heart just skipped when I yes. looked behind and I saw you. I said, alas, this God is great. Amen. 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 We give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Are we not happy that he... Yes. Yeah? Glory to God. We need to be vibrant, you know. We need to keep that cheer. Uh, when things are getting better, we need to give God the glory. When things are... Um, I mean, when the opportunities are... Uh, unfolding, we need to give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I don't want to waste much of your time. Uh, we are going straight to the Word of God. And uh, and uh, I'm looking at the books, two books today. They are very short books. Don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Very, uh, very short books. We are going to look at uh, Naham and Habakkuk. Very special books. Glory to God. Amen. Before we proceed, shall we pray? In the name of Jesus, I give you praise and I give you honor. I give you thanks, O oh gracious God Almighty, for this opportunity. For this chance that you've given unto me, in the name of Jesus, to be able to stand before your congregation. Yes, and speak your word. And say your word. And uh, present to you, O oh God, Father, to present to the congregation the two books and what they contain. Father, I pray, inspire me, that I may speak according to what God you want, you intend that may be spoken to your people. It's in the name of Jesus that I want to give you thanks. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that God, you are going to give me the inspiration. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I, was going to th I was going to think of, uh, of uh, the choir to give us one, one song, but... Uh, we are behind time, so I'll just go straight to the Word of God. Today we are looking at two books: the books of Naham and the books of and the book of Habakkuk. These two books have each got uh, three chapters, and uh, all together they make just six chapters. And uh, it isn't much. I don't want to make uh, to make uh, the story long, long today. Uh, I've summarized, and they, I'll go through the summary. And they, we're going to read a few scriptures in both books, just to have a glimpse of what uh, the scriptures say, other than just me speaking. Amen. Amen. So I'll be a little bit slower, uh, and I've put on, uh, I've applied my teaching gear. Uh, because sometimes uh, uh, teaching is very difficult to become and they be able to, uh, uh, to, to present what, what is there. Sometimes uh, that preaching element uh, kicks, uh, kicks in, but uh, I'll try to, uh, to give breaks to that so that uh, probably I can make uh, this context uh, as much clearer as I could be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We are going to start with the book of Nahum. The book of Nahum uh, is a book named after the prophet Nahum, who is the, the writer or who is uh, to, to whom the, uh, the contents are ascribed. There, as usual, you know, when we are looking into, into the Bible and we are looking at, uh, at the uh, research context, that have been a launch to uh, to find out who is the writer is and at what time or uh, to who and uh, what uh, he was writing to and what the Lord was speaking to the uh, to the uh, to the congregation or to the to the uh, 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 or uh, to the audience that he was addressing. So the the name Habakkuk simply means a uh, consolation. Amen. Amen. It, say, it, it says consolation. So the name Nahum uh, is a consolation. And uh, as opposed to Nehemiah, uh, Nahum is just a consolation. But Nehemiah uh, 
add some more. Nehemiah says it's a comfort of Yahweh or consolation of Yahweh. So Naham is just a it's just a short form of it, and uh, Nehemiah probably adds a, a complete a complete. Uh, I mean, a, a complete uh, uh, ascription to the to the law to say it's the comfort of God. Hmm. And uh, Naham was uh, was doing his uh, his work as he was called, as he was uh, commissioned uh, to prophesy, as he was commissioned as a as a as a, as a prophet. His message in his book were concentrated on uh, what God was saying about the Assyrians and uh, his prophecies about the city uh, called Nineveh. Amen. Nineveh is the city, was a city of the Assyrian, of the nation of Assyrian or the kingdom of Assyria, whatever it was called. And uh, we don't seem to find Nineveh at this moment because it is no more. Amen. And they will find out why it is no more. It's because of what we are, of what God, or of what uh, the prophet Naham is saying in, uh, in the context, in the context of his book. You remember last Sunday, uh, we heard that Jonah was was sent to go and preach to uh, uh, to the city of Nineveh, but Jonah decided not to because the Syrian city uh, of Nineveh was one of the cities of the enemies. Amen. Assyria was always was a perpetual enemy of the children of Israel, although at one point they became allies and. Uh, and uh, it was uh, briefly stayed, and they, we see that the Syrians wanted to wipe out the, the nation of Israel. But uh, God would not allow that. And uh, at the time when Jonah was sent to uh, prophesy or to preach to Nineveh, uh, it was the time when uh, Jonah didn't feel like uh, he would go and preach to Nineveh because he wanted them destroyed. As we learned last week that uh, Jonah was running away. Instead of going towards south, he would go towards north. The opposite of where God has sent him to go. And uh, he was just trying to avoid preaching to them because he knew that when he, when he preaches to them, they are going to repent. But he didn't want that. But God wanted this, this, uh, this city repented. He wanted, he wanted them to be saved. And uh, we see that Jonah was swallowed by the, by the fish. And uh, God had, uh, had ordained the fish to carry Jonah and transfer him to, uh, transport him to Nineveh. And he preached and the city confessed and the salvation was there. And there was a revival in the city of Nineveh. But it was only, uh, I mean, it, the, the, the revival was just there for, uh, for a short while. And uh, according to, uh, to the context of this book, uh, or according to the research work, it was found that uh, this revival just stayed for about 100 years, uh, after which the city of Nineveh continued in its original uh, nature of sinfulness, and they continued in sin. And we see that uh, when that happened, that's when now God ordained Naham to go and prophesy against the city of Nineveh. Amen. And he prophesied doom. As we hear that there are certain prophets that are prophets of doom, and they probably we can qualify that uh, maybe Nahum was a prophet of doom to the, to, the city of, to the city of Nineveh. Well, it was not doom, but uh, they deserved it because of their continued sinfulness. Amen. In those days, God would give a sign or it would, give a, would give a warning before he does something, before he brings judgment to anybody, to any, to any city, to any nation, to any individual. When there is sin, God would, uh, would bring a word 
of warning to that person or to that nation or to that city before its destruction. We see there are a few examples. We've got an example of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. They're a typical example of what God did. God continuously kept on warning them, but uh, they continued in sin, and God eventually brought judgment. Amen. Amen. We need to learn a few key, uh, key points in, a, in the book of uh, in the book of Nahum. Nahum is said to have been a uh, his ministry was said to have been a during the the seven, the, the, the fifth uh, the fifth century BC around 600 BC. That's the time when a, when Nahum was giving his prophets or prophecies. And uh, we've got here the key verse, which is uh, uh, chapter 1 of, um, of Nahum and verses 7 to 8. If somebody can read, please. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he lowered them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flock, he will make an altar end of the place thereof. And that mess shall pursue his enemies. Glory to God. Amen. He says he's a merciful God, full of mercy, full of love, full of compassion to those that love him. But to those that oppose him is the opposite. Amen. We're going to see in these two books, because these two books has, has both of them. It has both of them. It has a it has a it has a, an element of a, of God's a, of God's love. It has got an element of God's judgment against those who are sinners or those who are disobedient to his commandment. And we'll see that uh, we'll see that God is always a loving God. He is always a loving God. And uh, some people have, uh, have considered God to be a very ruthless. So seeing when we are doing ministry, when we are preaching to people, or we are witnessing some people will say, ah, oh, don't, don't tell me about your God. Your God is always a, a bad God. He, he, he kills. He, he killed my daughter. He killed my son. He killed my mother. Uh, such kind of things. Well, we might say so. When uh, something like that comes, we might say so. But we need to look into the word of God on uh, how God has dealt with man right from the beginning up to the time where we are now. God is still dealing with man with love, mercy, and judgment as well. Amen. Amen. Because he, had, he has laid his will, he has laid his program, he has laid, he has, he has laid all that he wants, all that he desires from us. He has laid it bare in his word. And uh, he wants us, he demands that we, we follow what he has commanded us. But if we do, if we do something that is contrary to that, then we are bound to meet the contrary. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, we see that in the, in the second chapter, it, outlines the, it is a, an outline of a poetical way that uh, the, prophet, the prophet Nahum presented to the uh, presented his prophecy his prophecy was very poetical amen it was very poetical he presented it in a poet form uh, about the destruction of uh, uh, of the uh, of the city of, of, of Naham he made it clear in a in a poet in a poet form if we can read it can somebody quick read chapter 2 of uh, uh, of 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 the book of Nahum, please, for us. Nahum chapter 2. Yes. He that dasheth in pieces is come up before thy face. Keep the, keep the munition watch away. Make thy loins strong. Fortify thy power mightily. For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob mm. as the excellency of Israel. For the emptiest have emptied them out and marred their, their vine with branches. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots shall be 
be with flaming watches, torches in the day of the preparation, and the fair trees shall be terribly shaken. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall, they shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightnings. He shall recount his worthies. They shall stumble in their walk. They shall make haste to the wall thereof, and the defense shall be prepared. The gates of the river shall be opened, and the palace shall be dissolved. And Hosea shall be led away captive. She shall be brought up, and her maid shall lead her as with the voice of doves, tabering upon their breasts. But Nineveh is of old like a pool of water, yet shall flee away. Stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Take ye the spoil of silver, take the spoil of gold, for there is none end of the store and the glory out of all the pleasures good furniture. She is empty and void and waste, and the heart melted, and the knees smite together, and much pain is in the all loins, and the faces of them all gather blackness. Where is the dwelling of the lions, and in the feeding place of the young lion? Where the lions, even the lion, old lion, walked, and the lions wept, and none made them afraid. The lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelp, and struggled for his lioness, and filled his holes with prey, and his dens with raven. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will burn the chariots in the smoke, and the sword shall devour thy young lions, and I will cut off thy prey from the earth, and the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard. Amen. Amen. Have you seen how how God was going to destroy uh, the city of Nineveh. The city of Nineveh was going to be destroyed. It was going to be, uh, to be wiped out that there will be no more of it again. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, you see that uh, God goes wrath. When the wrath comes, it is so, it is so, so big that, uh, that uh, you may not uh, think of. Amen. But when he's loving, he is so tender. Amen. He's so loving. Amen. He's so caring. And they, that is his nature. But the judgment is because it's not, it's not him judging because he has already judged. And, uh, and, uh, and if we don't want to be judged, if we don't want to be judged, we need to judge ourselves before God judges. Amen. The Bible tells us that we, sh we need to judge ourselves so that we do not fall into the hands of, uh, of the Almighty God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. As I said earlier that the second chapter is the outline of how God was going to destroy the city of, ne of, of Nineveh. Despite what, despite what God uh, did with Jonah, they repented, and there was a revival. They knew God, and they, they worshipped him. They reverenced him, but uh, shortly they had forgotten him. Just the same as it is in this world today. There's some people, there are times when, uh, when we saw a very great revival in the church, like, for example, I'll give an example of this nation. This nation was, a, uh, was, a, was the pioneer in the, in, the, in the world evangelism. Amen. Wherever they went, they carried the word of God. And they, it, the nations that they colonized knew about God because they carried their Bibles. They carried the word of God to all the nations where they had gone. Amen. But uh, it is a different story nowadays. Because when we were back home from, uh, from my country, I thought probably, oh, since Britain had brought the word of God, uh, they are still like that, they are vibrant. But when I came here, alas, it was a different, it was a different story. Amen. We, uh, we, uh, it's evident, we see that the, most of the churches, uh, near, every, near every corner, there used to be a church building. 
You can see how much they reverenced God, how much they loved God, how much they, they wanted God in their midst. And at one point, I heard somebody, somebody making a point. We say it's, 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 so, it's so weird. Uh, wherever you go, there is a church. Wherever you go, this corner, there is a church. This corner, there is a church building. Uh, why so many churches? You see? And uh, they were comparing them with the, with the pubs. But uh, slowly, we see that the churches are being replaced by pubs. There is every pub. I mean, there is a, there is a pub in every corner nowadays. In every corner, there is a pub. And you see a lot of people flocking there. But you can see that in the church, there are no people at all. And some of the church buildings, as we can see, they're just church buildings from outside. From inside, they are rotten. Some of them are getting dilapidated. They're getting spoiled and so forth. You can see the example of this one. We just inherited it after a period of it being abandoned and they were squatted in this place and this place was dirty. It is supposed to be the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. But it, that's, not a, that's not the case nowadays. The world has gone to its own ways. It has gone to, to do things that are, that, are, that are ahead of. And God is just looking at us. He's just watching us. There will be a time. Though we can see there are people that are, that are preaching in this nation. And the people that are preaching in this nation, as we can see here, the majority are others. Amen. The majority are not British at all. There is only, thank you, brother. Uh, there is only one person, one person or another person there. Oh, uh, uh, brother Mark. Oh, welcome, brother Mark. I didn't see you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm, on, I'm even over, over excited now, you know. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That gives me hope that Britain is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Britain is coming back. Huh? His surname is Britain. Also. Uh, you're Britain? <laughs> yeah. That's your surname? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, can I call this prophetic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Britain is coming back to God. Glory yeah. to God. Britain is coming back to God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. That, was a, that was very surprising. And uh, the same way, it will be very surprising how Britain will get back to God. Amen. Amen. As you can see, that in most churches, when you go around, you will see that the majority are from other nations. Amen. 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 Why is that? It's because they've lost the first love that they had. The revival that was in this country has been lost. The revival that was there has been lost. But how do we do? How do we deal with this? We need to continue preaching. We need to continue saying the word of God that has given unto us. That has been given to us. We need to continue saying it. We never know when God's grace is going to hit this nation. And we shall see a great revival. I still, I still believe and I'm a believer of a, of, a great away, of a great awakening in this nation and other nations alike. In our Bible, in our Bible uh, studies uh, with the, one of the uh, teachers of the university, uh, we learned that uh, it's not only Britain, it's actually across Europe. There is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of going backwards. We need revival in uh, Europe. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. We need that revival. Amen. And it will only come when you and me rise up in faith. Rise up strongly. And be strong in the Lord. And preach the gospel. That will make people come back and get away from uh, their evil deeds. Just as Nineveh got away from their evil deeds when Jonah preached to them. But it was short-lived. And down a uh, hundred years down the line, they, came, they went back to the same. Just as, uh, as, just as uh, we see that Britain, some few years, I mean, uh, some, 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 some centuries uh, after, we see that Britain is following a, a suit. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, all, it's, it's also in the statistics of those that are, that are aren't God. Amen. They loved God, but now they seem to be unto God. But anyway, that is going to change very shortly. Amen. 
Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Now we get to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk is another book uh, that also talks about a about judgment. And this time is not the judgment of the nation or of the city of the heaven, but it's the judgment of the nation that God loves. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Yeah. Habakkuk was a prophet during the time when they, during the time of the death rolls of the nations of Judah of the nation of Judah. Although repeatedly called to repentance, the nation stubbornly refuses to change her sinful words. Just as Nineveh didn't want to, uh, to continue in righteousness, they fell back to, the, to their nature of sin, so did the nation of Israel, uh, Judah in particular, Continue on also falling back to their to a sinful nature like any other world or every nation or city. Habakkuk, knowing the uh, uh, the hard uh, the the hard heartedness of his countrymen, asked God how long this intolerance condition intolerant intolerable condition uh, can continue. God replies that the uh, Babylonians be his chast chastening rod upon the nation. It was a time when uh, the children of Israel continued in the sinful nature and, uh, and Habakkuk as a prophet he was he was perplexed at what was happening in the nation of, uh, of Israel, in the children of Israel, especially on the side of Judah because they, by that time, the nation of Israel was divided. There was, uh, there was Israel and there was Judah. Now, his prophecy were mainly uh, to, the, to, uh, to, to, the, to, to the division or to the path which was, uh, which was, which was led by Judah. Amen. Amen. And when they, Habakkuk saw that there was so much wickedness in the nation or in the, uh, in the nation of Judah, or in amongst the children of Israel in Judah, he took it upon himself to consult with God what was happening and why God is taking so long to deal with what was happening. Amen. Amen. So he sought God several times. And we'll see that he, in, the, in, the, in the way he was asking God, he was asking God how long this will take. How long will, the, uh, will, will Judah continue in sin? How long will they continue disobeying God? How long will they turn away from the will of God? And he continuously consulted God, but God was silent at a certain point. He was silent. He was just listening to the, uh, to, uh, to Habakkuk say, uh, 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 praying and, uh, and, uh, and questions. And, they, and then suddenly he answered him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read Habakkuk verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, first of all. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou wilt not hear, even cry out of thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to be called grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore, the law is slack, and the judgment ne doth never go forth. For the wicked that compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceeded. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, Habakkuk was complaining to God. He said, God, can you not see how the wicked are, are destroying or they are coming against or they are misusing or mishandling 
the people that are righteous. They are trying to, to, to persecute them. And their persecutions, their injustices that are seen in the houses of, uh, of leadership. In the in the houses where justice needs to be uh, need, need, need to be need to be labelled, we see that there is always injustice. How long are you going to do this? How long are you going to keep up with this? How long are we going to suffer? Are the people going to suffer in the hands of the wicked? Habakkuk was asking God, and then God appeared at one time. He said, "Just wait. I've got a plan for them." Amen. Amen. He said, I've got a plan for them. Look, it's the same way. You know, sometimes we may be in our, in our own way. We have uh, run away or we have come out of the will of God and we continue that way. You see, God's mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. He's slow to anger and his loving kindness is always there. Why is it so? It's because God is looking for you and me to come back to him, to realize that God is doing this. He's not punishing me because he wants me back there. Amen. Amen. Habakkuk was asking, how long is it going to happen? And he wanted just, uh, ju justice. He wanted to be justified. He wanted those who are righteous to be justified. Those who are doing well to be justified. Amen. Amen. So, what does the word justification mean? Justification is the state or the ability of man standing before God without feeling a feeling of guilt or condemnation and fear. Amen. Amen. That's justification. So, he wanted, he wanted people, he wanted God to bring that justice so that the righteous can be justified. Amen. Can be justified. His struggle came to an end when God responded. Out of the silence, God said, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not too late. I'm always on time. Amen. I'm always on time. And the reason why he was taking so long is because he wanted them to, uh, to repent. He wanted them to come back to God. Let's read 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 to 10 please. We see why God sometimes takes long to act. Or why God, God takes long. Yes, to come and, they, and, and, they, and take us away from this world. He's doing so for a purpose because he wants every nation, he wants every creature, everybody, every generation to come to the knowledge of God. Amen. So read please for me quickly. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 to 10. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 to 10. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count sick slackness, but is long-suffering toward, toward us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, that's the reason why God is taking long to bring judgment. That's the reason why God is, was taking long to, uh, uh, to make a move to these people of Judah. He was taking long. And uh, Habakkuk was becoming Im uh, impatient about that because of what was going on. Because of the injustices that were going on uh, around the around uh, around the area, around the place, around the land, people that were doing were doing were doing well, people that were right, people that were following the commandments of God were being tortured, were being uh, 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 persecuted. They were they were being shown injust injustice. But Habakkuk did not like that kind of a thing. And then we see that God responded, uh, responded to Habakkuk by, uh, by saying that uh, he will raise a nation, a ruthless nation from afar to come and destroy this nation. Amen. Amen. To come and punish, to come and show 
But God can do something. Amen. Amen. And this and this nation that it was going to, to raise the very ruthless one. Babylonian nation. Very ruthless. And he, in his description, he describes that a very, very, very bad, a very, very bad nation. Very bad nation. Shall we read that from uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 to 11, please? Yes, please. Behold, ye, am, ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye shall not believe, though it will be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, the bitter and hasty nation, mm. which shall march through the breadth of their land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Mm. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than their leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, mm. and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasted to eat. They shall come all, they shall come for all, sorry, they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall support as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand, and they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be scorned unto them. They shall deride um, every stronghold, for they shall keep dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We, we see how, how uh, Habakkuk uh, in, in uh, how God describes this nation. You remember last Wednesday, if you were looking in in the Bible study, which which takes place uh, on Wednesday and today on Sundays, because we are still on the Bible study, uh, going through the Bible. So we have it on Sunday and we have it on Wednesdays. And uh, if you have the chance to log in, we continue our studies even on Wednesday. That's why. If you are just a Sunday a Sunday worshiper, you only you only hear maybe certain certain books. Maybe you've missed certain books. They say, but uh, they are saying they are going through the Bible, but uh, they have they have missed some books. Some books are being dealt with on Wednesday. Amen. So if you want to catch up with everything that is uh, that is being presented, you better log in on Wednesday as well. Amen. So last Wednesday, we, uh, we are looking at the book of Micah, and we see that uh, there were elements in there, the, 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 uh, the elements of the, of, uh, of the, uh, of the locusts, of, the, uh, of, of these people that are coming with judgment. They were like uh, the description that is over here. It's not actually the canker worms. It's not actually like the grasshoppers or whatever they are. This prophecy is about uh, the very people. It is about the people. It is not about the locusts that will come that look like lions or whatever. It is actually the people. You know, the world at this moment is uh, is become so sophisticated that uh, they are preparing for their own death row. Amen. These weapons that we hear of, the nuclear, the whatever, whatever we hear, biological, whatever, these are the weapons that are going to be used at the time when, when God will see it right to judge the, the entire world. These are the things that are going to be, uh, to, uh, to be used. You see, the description here is, is like, is like a, a well-prepared, well-organized army. The army that is so fierce, like the way we look at, a, uh, at America this moment, like the way we look at Russia, like the way we look at China. These are nations that we see, if you look at the, the way they talk about the war, they, 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 they have got a, they have got a, a very, very, very terrifying equipment, very terrifying uh, training, training, and a very terrifying uh, everything that is a, that is prepared for battle. So this is the kind of people that are uh, that God was 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 bringing to Judah so that He can teach them a lesson. Can you imagine?
imagine we've had a lot of Russia, we have, we have had a lot of China. The way the way they are preparing for uh, to wipe out the name, I mean to wipe out the world. Uh, can you imagine if if say for example, uh, God just allowed China. Yeah, with all his equipment, with all his equipment, uh, is it equipment or uh, 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 equipment? Uh, that's my pastor's uh, my pastor's word. So I wanted to use it today, yeah, <laughs> to bring their equipment, you know, to bring them just in this city of, of Liverpool. They'll just because Liverpool is full of sin and God is tired of what they're doing. And God just wants to teach us, to come and teach us, to show us that we need to read, we need to, to, to follow the words of righteousness. And He will bring maybe, just maybe part of China's uh, equipment, equipment, and bring them here and teach us a lesson. Amen. We'll learn maybe by that time we'll be able to say, God, I think uh, from today I'll never, 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 ever, ever do what I did. Amen. But alas, just like like they, we see that in later days the children of Israel, I mean, the, the Judah, continued in its in its sin. So God deals with love, but when His love runs out with time, because it says a time, and after that time He bring judgment. It doesn't mean that God is a God is a, is a bad boy. Is a God, I mean, is a bad boy, uh, God. He's a good God. All that he, he wants is for everybody to see that He is a loving God that can wait for you no matter how long you want to take, but you have to be within that limit of His grace. Amen. You have to be within that period of His grace when God is still looking for you, waiting for you. But if you go beyond that, God's judgment is going to come on your life, is going to come on my life. But it, we have no time. We don't have time. We know that uh, uh, the word of God tells us that uh, Jesus Christ is coming back. But it might, think, it might seem to be too long. It might seem to be uh, a long way. Some people have said, no, I mean, God, uh, Jesus is not going to come today. He's going to come some other time. Well, that's, that, that's true. And some other people have said that uh, uh, since, since I was born, I've been hearing about this Jesus coming back, but up to now he hasn't come yet. Yes, it's true, he hasn't come yet. But why? Because he wants you to get back to him. He wants you to, have, uh, uh, to, 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 to make yourself ready. He wants you to repent. He wants you to know his will and do his will. Amen. But there shall be a time, and the time may be now, you may just walk out of this room and hit by a car. Your judgment is just right, it's just that there. If you do not, if you do not know God, then your end has come. Whatever you are in whatever state you are, that's the state you will meet God with. Amen. If you are if you are still in your sinful nature, you will meet him in judgment. Because he will say Get to my get to my left because you are a worthless servant. Amen. But we are all good servants here. I presume we are all good servants. And we need to maintain that name. If I say you are good servants and they I'm saying this in a, in front of God and they please do yourself well to be that good, to be that good, to be according to the standard of God, to be that good, so that on that day you do not face the judgment of God. Amen. Amen. So these people were very ruthless. And he wanted them to teach the children of God how to love him. So God may bring some situations in our life. We may be undergoing certain situations. Some situations, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe our own life, maybe our own uh, making. Some other situations, maybe that because... Uh, God knows that he, we are going through those situations and he knows we can take it because the Bible says that you cannot, you cannot be tempted beyond your measure, beyond your nature, beyond what you can handle. Amen. But if God brings temptations, he knows that you can handle them. Amen. But if you, if you despise that, God is going to bring judgment on you and is bring is going to bring people that will make your life harder amen 
harder than before because he wants you to learn in a hard way. But his life endures forever. His life, his, his love endures forever. Amen. Amen. I'm not I'm not I'm not taking long. Just be finishing very shortly. Let's read uh, let's read uh, uh, chapter two verses uh, five to twenty, please. Bible chapter two verse five to twenty. He also because he transgressed by wine by wine, he is a proud man, neither keep it at home who enlightens his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that loadeth himself with thick clay. Shall they not rise up and suddenly that shall bite thee, and away that shall face thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remains of the people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land of the city, and all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covereth coveted or an evil covetousness to his house and that he may get his he may set his nest on high that he may be delivered from the power of evil thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and hast sinned against thy soul for the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for the, for very vanity? For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, and as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth that bottle to him, and maketh him drunken also, that, that, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Bring thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on the glory. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, of the city, of all that, that dwell therein. Paul provided the graven image that the maker thereof had graven it, the molten image and the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that said to the wood, away to the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach, behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, these are some of the things that people turn back to. They turn back to things that are not God at all. You know, I like I like when God uh, first starts. This was the second question that uh, that Habakkuk had for God. The first one was answered, and the second one uh, he asked. And then when God replied, he said, he said, write down the leverage and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Amen. Amen. It is important as children of God, when, they, when God speaks, you make a record of whatever God speaks. When you see a vision, when you, when you have a dream, when you have a liberation, write it down. So that at the time when it unfolds, you know what to do. 
A lot of people, the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. If you lack knowledge or if you have forget, forgotten what God has said uh, that he will do at a certain time when you don't obey his word or when something happens, you forget about it. Then when the destruction comes, it will take you unaware. Amen. It's important, children of God, to record whatever God speaks, the prophecies, that we see, that we hear in this church, there are times when God dis uh, uh, decides to speak in our in our ministry. He has spoken a few times and uh, recently. And uh, if you don't take those notices, if you don't record, if you don't remember, then when destruction comes or when God wants to bless. When his blessing is due, you will not know it because you have forgotten. Amen. So we need to be on top of it when God whispers to you, when God reveals to you, when God uh, gives you a, 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 word of knowledge, a word of knowledge, gives you a, a revelation. Record it because in the future it will give you, uh, it will give you a, a better position. For you to position for whatever it is, whether it is a blessing, you be you you not you not be caught unaware. Whether it's judgment, you not be caught aware. You not be a statistics among those that will be caught under that kind of judgment. Amen. Amen. Record, record your uh, your your recording or I mean your revelations. Record what God has revealed to you, so that when uh, when it comes, you be able to be aware and be ready for what you need to do or for what you need to prepare before God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Habakkuk also mentions that he will, he will take his position. As children of God, we need to take our position. We need to take our post. We need to take our post. If you are a, an intercessor, take your post, intercede for the church, intercede for the ministry, intercede for the ministers, intercede for the families, intercede for each and every person, for each and every department in the church, intercede for them, take your post. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. And we shall not be caught unaware. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. What name? What name is going to appear? What name will you bear when you are gone? What will people remember you for? Will they remember you for, for bad things or for good things? Some people, some people that have gone, we just remember them as a statistics. Amen. We just remember them statistically. We don't remember them for the details of good things that they did. Among us then, they say, oh, among us all these who died in this, who did this, is the ABCD, ABCD, that's it. Amen. Amen. But at least when you go, you need to have a legacy, where to leave a legacy, where when people remember your name, they will not just stop by saying, oh, he did this, and they forget. They will say, oh, this guy, how I love him. How I love her. How I wish he would have lived at this time. How I wish I was in his, uh, in his era. How I wish I was found near him. Things like that. That's the name that we need to bear. We don't need to bear a name that will just be a mere statistic. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. We give God the glory. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. On the same way. On the same, on, on, on the same, if we can read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, 1, how that God, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, 1, please. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. Amen. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the Lord. Because when you fall in the hands of the Lord in that way, it means that God is... God's judgment will be upon you. Amen. Amen. You, don't, you don't want to be like that, do you? No. Nobody wants to be like that. And now, bear in mind that he, God is a loving God. I mentioned before, he's a loving God. He doesn't show, uh, he, he doesn't show uh, favoritism. He's not somebody that you can bribe with the way you look or with the way you, uh, you come to church. 
Oh, you're always on, on time, but uh, when you get out of here, you are doing wrong things. God is not going to be bribed by that. Amen. Amen. He's not a respect of man. He doesn't respect you because you've got so many degrees. He doesn't respect you because you are a prime minister. He doesn't respect you because you are a president. He doesn't respect you because you are a king. He respects you only when you have aligned yourself with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's only through Jesus when he sees the blood of his son on you, then he will respect you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will respect you when he sees the blood of his son on you. Oh, Jesus. oh hallelujah. Amen. He will respect you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. We have to be that kind of a people. Remember that God is not a respecter of man. He will not bow to your uh, to your to your pledges, uh, your compliment, your complaints that you complain before him will say, No, God, I didn't do this because you, you did that. I didn't do that because I didn't have that. And you did that because I did that because I didn't have that. God has given each one of us an equal opportunity. And the opportunity that, is, that God has given us is an opportunity like this one. When I'm preaching to you about what, what, what God wants us to be. When I'm preaching to you about God's will. When I'm preaching to you about God's mind, about your life and my life. His will is that nobody may perish, but everybody may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But you may say, you say, no, I'm all right. I, I, I've never stolen. I've never insulted. I've never done all such, all such kinds of things. Of course, yes, you are good. But you're not good enough for God. Amen. Amen. Not good enough for God. Because man has sinned. Oh, everybody. Each one of us has sinned. And we are fallen short of the glory of God. But we, can, we are only justified. By our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. By our faith in Jesus Christ. It only, takes a, it only takes a few seconds. You just need to say, God, I'm here, I'm a sinner. Save me, forgive me for my sinful nature. And accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. That's the very important thing. Two very important things. You have to accept that you are a sinner. And then you have to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Not just as a Savior. I know a lot of people say that Jesus is my Savior. Of course, He is a Savior. He is a Savior. But who is He to you? You only come to you when you call Him as Lord. Amen. When you call Him Lord, He will come to you. There was a story. There was a story. Jesus, uh, there was a story. You remember, if you read the Bible, you remember this story. Remember there was a there was a lady uh, a woman from uh, uh, from uh, uh, a gentile woman who came to Jesus at one point and they, uh, she said she said her daughter was dying with a with the uh, with an evil spirit amen he said, she called to Jesus and said Jesus son of David have mercy on me the Bible says that Jesus was silent he never answered at all. Why did Jesus not respond? But we also know that in, this, in some scripture where, where uh, somebody called at him and said, Jesus, son of, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus has come. What's the difference? The difference is this woman was a Gentile. He was a Gentile. He was not part of the children of Israel. So he was a Gentile. So as a Gentile, you can call on the name of the Lord. You can call on Jesus, just as Jesus, son of David, of course, is the son of David. As you can say, Jesus, our Savior. Yes, of course, he, of course, is our Savior. But it will not do you good. You need to mention to you need to worship Him. You need to identify your weakness with Him and uh, and, and, and and show that he, he is Lord and He is able to save you. And when this woman said, came to Jesus and fell down before Jesus and worshipped him, said, Lord, have mercy. When, he said, when she said that word, Lord, have mercy, he touched Jesus. Amen. Amen. He touched Jesus because she worshipped him. And when it happened, then Jesus continued to try to try her how far she can go. She said, it's not good for 
for children's food to be given to the, to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, I know that. But even dogs eat crumbs from their master's table. Amen. Amen. That, was a, that was a sign of humility. That was a sign of humility. She understood that Jesus Christ was not just Jesus, the son of David. He was Lord. Amen. Amen. When she worshipped her, when she worshipped him, and then we see Jesus responding. And when she said, she said the last statement that I've just said that uh, she said even the, uh, even uh, even dogs lick uh, uh, the crumbs from uh, their master's table. It caught uh, Jesus Christ's attention even more. He said, uh, "Woman, your faith has made me has, has made you whole. Has made your daughter whole." And the Bible says at that very hour. That child was healed. Amen. Amen. You need to call upon Jesus Christ as your own, as your own Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You need to worship Him. You don't, you don't just need to. You don't, you don't just need Him to save you. You need Him to be Lord. He should be there for you. You should always worship Him and remain in Him. Remain worshiping Him all the time. Some people have a tendency to just come to church and say, oh, pastor, pray for me. Of course, pastor will not let you go without being prayed for. He will pray for you. But if you don't take Jesus Christ, he, he will present to you. You go out there, you are healed here, you go out there, the devil will be waiting outside. Amen. But if you want to have a full package, you need to surrender your life to Jesus and say, Jesus, save me. And you will be my Lord, the Lord of my of my life. Amen. That's the desire of God. Are we are we ready for that? Are we ready for that? If you say no, I'm one of them. I want Jesus to come into my life. I've never asked Jesus to come into my life as my personal Savior and my Lord. Just say these words with me together, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you died for me I thank you that you died for everybody yes I confess my, my, my sinful nature before you and I, and I ask you to come into my life forgive my sins be, be the lord of my, my, my soul I thank you for accepting me I thank you for coming into my life and I give you the glory in the name of Jesus Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you are a child of God. You are justified immediately right now. Right now, if you died, if you meant that prayer, right now, if you died, you will be with Jesus in paradise, as he said. Amen. You will be with him. But if you haven't said that, if you haven't prayed it genuinely, then you still have something to sort out with him. Amen. So that is what God desires of us. Hallelujah. Amen. So, both books have, uh, have taught us how God is not a respect of a person of persons. He judges the righteous and the wicked alike. We have seen that, we have seen that he judged the, the wicked city and he judged uh, Judah as well. Amen. So, he's not a respecter of persons. If we don't want to judge we have to judge ourselves before God judges us. Amen. Amen. We have to judge ourselves. Glory be to God. I think I think that that scripture is is, is from First uh, uh, Corinthians chapter eleven, verse thirty-one, and I will close with this one. Just to know that you need to judge yourself before God judges you. Amen. Amen. Can somebody please read that? First Corinthians chapter eleven, chapter 11 verse thirty-one. For if we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Amen. So if we judge ourselves constantly, every day, am I okay with God? If you if you see that there is something that you've done wrong to God, confess it. He has put the provision in there. 1 John 9, 1 John 1 verse 9, it says, if you confess to God, He's faithful and just to forgive your sins and your trespasses. Amen. So that is what we need to do. And um, thank you for listening. And uh, we praise God for his word. Amen. 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 We give God the glory for that word.
God bless you. Bless you for that word. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope we have...